In this video, we're going to look at why you discount the future when doing cost-benefit analysis. Would you rather receive $100 today or $100 in 10 years? I'll tell you what you want before you answer. And it's going to be right. You would want $100 today because you can do stuff with it now. You could lend that $100 to the bank who will pay you interest for it. And after 10 years, you would just have more than $100. Or you could buy a violin, a crappy violin, learn to play, and in 10 years, make some sort of profession out of it. Or just simply have gained that enjoyment from it. An enjoyment that you would have had to wait for if you had received $100 in 10 years. Also, you could be dead in the future. You know that dog you had when you were a kid and your parents said it went on doggy vacation? It's not on vacation. It's dead. Every Every day into the future is another day we are uncertain we will be alive, so we prefer to have things in the present. There is an opportunity to do things with money, goods, and services today, as well as an inherent risk that we might not be able to enjoy them in the future. Whether you're going to buy something or save the money, there's a greater value in having something in the present than having it in the future. It's not that it physically has less value. This isn't about inflation or anything like that. And for our purposes here, we're using the real value and assuming that $100 today buys the same amount of stuff as $100 dollars in 10 years. It's just that having money, goods, or services earlier lets you do things with it that may increase its value to you. So when comparing costs and benefits across different time periods, we discount the future. We ask, what is $100 gained in 10 years worth today? What is the present value of $100 from 10 years from now? But let's first calculate what $100 from today would be in 10 years. Okay, what's the future value of $100 in 10 years? We'll use the bank's interest rate to represent that, because that's a good basis for what we would be doing with the money, just putting it in a bank. Let's assume the money grows by 5% a year with compounding interest. We would multiply $100 by 1.05 to grow it by 5%. 1 to account for the money we already had that we'll get back, and 0 0.05 to account for the interest we'll earn. Okay, then we take that $105 and multiply it by 1.05 again for the next year. Then we do that 8 more times. Or we could have just written it like this, taking the 1 plus the interest rate to the power of 10, since we're just multiplying it by the interest rate for 10 years. So $100 after 10 years of interest is $162.89. The future value of $100 from today in 10 years is $162.89. Back to that first hypothetical situation, this is how much we would expect to receive if we were to give up $100 today. We would want at least $162.89 in 10 years time. Because if we got $100 today, we could make it into that much by lending it out for 10 years. So if the question were, would you rather receive $100 today or $162.89 in 10 years, since these are basically equivalent, you should have no preference. To do it the other way, to determine the present value, we just divide by 1 plus the interest rate. So if we were to get $100 in 10 years, what is the present value of that $100? Take 100, divide by 1.05, 10 times, or 1.05 to the power of 10, and we get $61.39. The present value of $100 received 10 years from now is $61.39. This is the amount of money that if we put it into the bank for 10 years, it would become $100. So if you were asked, would you rather receive $61.39 today or $100 in 10 years? These are also basically equivalent and you should have no preference. This works for costs too. Would you rather pay $100 today or $100 in 10 years? Well, let's look. If we pay $100 today, we would be out $100. But what's the present value of $100 cost in 10 years? It's the same calculation, 100 divided by 1.05 to the power of 10 is $61.39. So what that means is we could put $61.39 in the bank today and it would grow to become $100 in 10 years. So paying in 10 years is easier. That is if you plan for it by saving now. Otherwise, it's still a $100 cost. Remember, it's not that the costs and benefits are less in the future. Discounting the future is just a decision-making tool. We can use it to compare the costs and benefits of different projects to find out which gives the greater payoffs when considering this time preference of money and how each dollar is valued at different times. The discount rate you choose is very important in this process. There's no hard rule for which rate you might choose, but it should be based on what the best alternative use of these resources are. So if you're a private firm doing a financial analysis, you may simply use the market interest rate or some other investment very similar to what we've been doing. Or if you have money coming in from different sources with different interest rates for the same project, you would want to use a weighted average discount rate. So like if 30% of your money came in from the bank at a 5% interest, 
but the other 70% came from investors that expect a 17% return, you would use a weighted average of the two interest rates. You would take 30% of your 5% interest rate and 70% of your 17% interest rate as your discount rate. So 3 tenths of 5% is 1.5% and 7 tenths of 17% is 11.9%. Add them together and you get 13.4%. And this is the discount rate you will use for this project. If you're doing an economic analysis, you will look at the economic opportunity cost of capital. What is the next best alternative use of these public funds? The economic discount rate will be different from a financial rate. It's typically lower. This is partly because public entities, the government, have more patience than individuals. The planning horizon accounts for more more than just the lifespan of a single individual's viewpoint. So that preference of consuming something in the present and that risk of personally not being able to experience something in the future isn't as important a factor from a societal point of view. So more weight can be put on the future and a lower discount rate can be used. Remember, with a higher discount rate, less weight is given to the future. With a lower discount rate, more weight is given to the future. A discount rate of zero would imply that the future has the same weight as the present. So an individual setting up a conservation park with a fee would expect higher returns and discount the future more because he expects to enjoy the benefits as soon as he can. Whereas a government is more patient and discounts based on everyone's ability to enjoy. Secondly, governments are usually able to borrow money at lower interest rates than private citizens or firms, and there is less pressure to gain immediate benefits. In other words, the opportunity cost to public projects is lower, so public projects use lower discount rates. In situations where the market is very unstable or there is political unrest, you might have to use a higher discount rate. For example, if you're going to invest in a forestry project in a place where there's an insurgency and slash and burn farming nearby, you're going to want a bigger return from the forest to offset the fact that this whole thing might burn down before you can harvest it, or it might be appropriated by rebels and it's not yours anymore. If the bank or investors feel this is a risky investment, they will expect a higher return, and the discount rate must be higher to account for this. Contrasted to that, you'll accept a lower discount rate from a forest somewhere peaceful, and maybe with a big forest firefighting team. You'll use a smaller discount rate because you're more certain your investment will pay off. You'll apply a higher discount rate to the payoffs from a risky investment than from the sure thing. Later on in the course, we'll talk more about how we use discounting. For now, in the next video, we'll look at some of the limitations of discounting and other considerations with respect to the time horizon of the project.